In the absence of information, people create their own. So if you're an employer and you're not talking to that new mom who's just come back, you're not checking on her, any of those sort of things, then she may think that you are not supportive. So it's always best to over communicate. Lactation accommodation means to me being accommodated throughout your breastfeeding journey. I think it's sort of funny we call it um, accommodations because I think that as women in our brain, we think that we need to like ask for these certain sort of things. Specifically talking about the workplace, um, this would be a employer and the people that you're working with meeting you where you are at in the ways that you need to be accommodated. Mom going back to work especially a mother who's going back to work, instantly has guilt. No matter how much time frame she's had off or how devoted she was or how intentional she was, there is a, there is a, a guilt thing in which that I've witnessed most moms go through in terms of, am I doing this right? And sometimes it's, am I adequately producing in my job because I just had a baby? Or is it this guilt of, oh man, should I have stayed home longer because I have a baby and left there? There's this like balance that comes back and forth. And honestly, sometimes that can just be hourly of whether or not I'm feeling like I'm not producing enough in my job or I'm not um, being a good enough mom that there's a lot of emotions and feelings going on. This would mean a space that is going to meet your needs for being able to nurse or pump for your baby that is not a bathroom or some stinky closet, somewhere that's comfortable and the mother feels safe being in. I was at the casino when I was pregnant, which has less lactation accommodation. Um, they have kind of a room that's connected to a bathroom with no windows and a small fridge. And so I had scoped the space out and I hadn't been very thrilled with it because it's really hot in there. And it's, I don't know, but then um, I actually got the job at the Reading Rancheria Tribal Health Center while I was pregnant. And so then I came back to work when I was seven weeks postpartum with my son and I have great lactation accommodation there. And I would even take lactation accommodation a step further into accommodating the emotional part of the mother too. And so this may mean, does the mother feel safe being able to ask what she, for what she needs? Does the mother feel safe where she's at? Does she feel like she has privacy? Does she feel pressured to have to come back to work? My coworkers were not fun. My coworkers gave me a hard time about it. Even moms, even moms that had babies would make comments about me leaving to pump. Like they, they did make me feel, they, well they didn't make me feel bad, but they tried to make me feel bad. And like, honestly, I'm still breastfeeding. So I could still be breastfeeding at work, but that is also kind of like a, you can only take so much of that before. So I, at one year old, I was like, I'm gonna stop pumping at work. For one, um, when it started, I did not know that the workplace provided that. In my head, I thought, you know what? That's your business, deal with it, figure that out. I just, I just didn't know. I assume stuff like that, you don't tell your boss, oh, I need to go pump or I need, to, you know? It, I just figured it was just my thing. I should just sort it out on my own. So when another supervisor actually realized that I did not know that this was available to me, she's very apologetic. I have three children and so my journey with each one of my children has been different with lactation accommodation. When I had my first daughter, I was 19 years old and I, um, even with having some education with breastfeeding, not you know, going into it, it's my first baby and you really do relearn with each baby. But um, I thought that it would be easier than it was and it wasn't. And so I had a job and um, I was thinking about this recently and I would forgotten all about, I did not get proper lactation accommodation with my daughter. And um, I would hide away in a closet to pump when I got to. Um, I remember getting really engorged and I would have to go into the bathroom real quick and just hand express into the toilet. Um, I didn't have support at the job I had. And when, you know, I remember even asking my boss about it and she's like oh you need to talk to the district manager and the district manager was like we don't really like you're in a job that is fast paced you got to do what you got to do 
reflecting back on it, feel uh, pretty upset about that. And um, at that time too, I did approach it, try to get the need met, but when I was denied that need, I didn't push back because I hadn't quite found my voice in the world yet either. Um, I would use the manager's office. Like, honestly, I I don't care. I, I would pump in the break room. If that makes you uncomfortable, don't look. I, I have no shame when I'm, I'm feeding my human and that's what my breasts are for. Um, but they would always insist like I could use the manager's office and like if they were, even if they were in there doing paperwork and I'm like, hey, I got a pump, they would leave and I would feel terrible, but they would, don't stop, you're fine, you know, do what you gotta do. Um, but those were the only areas that didn't have cameras. I went back to work when he was seven weeks old and then um, he weaned at about three years. So I pumped for a really long time. And over time, I feel like the layering and the comfortability that I had just in my own space, I could nurse him. I'd probably nurse him riding a bicycle through the hallways at my work and it would be perfectly fine. Um, because of my comfortability and you know, we've done enough education at work that there shouldn't be any concerns or questions. And if there were, we know how to handle them from patients instead of employees. I think that it's also important for employers to know that once a mom decides how it is that she's going to feed her baby, that that can change and that it sometimes can be clunky or messy or take some time. And so honestly, just the, the amount of grace and support that you can offer is best because if you can make a mom from an employer standpoint, if you can make a mom feel supported while she's in her workplace, she will be the most efficient, productful, um, and thorough employee that you have because she has a really good headspace. Um, and so I think that if we can make sure that their headspace is good, then I think that all of the quote unquote work that they're producing comes in at, at a higher level. Um, and so I think that that aspect of caring for them first really is a benefit. We did talk about it openly, um, and because of the department that we're in, us talking about it and being comfortable with it turned into talking about it like with the clinic. So we had Christy come and do an education for the entire clinic and all staff so we could get you know the little coalition sticker, put it at our work. I've talked about it. I always encourage our moms to be comfortable nursing wherever, you know, wherever they want to, because as we all know, some like to cover up, some don't like to cover up, and that's okay. And you know, I'm comfortable with that. And I think that we've created a culture of comfortability with that at the Rancheria, which is really cool. They were very, very supportive. Um, and I guess luckily I work around a high population of women, most of whom were mothers or um, or our mothers rather. And they were very, very supportive. You know, there, there were times you could, like my girlfriend would say, oh, go ahead, no, I got you, go girl. <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, I really gotta go pump right now, just for like a few minutes, just to kind of get it out. Um, and she's like, I got you, go, you know, so, and then even starting in the fridge, you know, so I learned to like, you know, you know, you pump and you put it in a little bag and you kind of put it in this fridge and they didn't make it weird. So they were very supportive and, um, and then I like I would tease when I put it in the fridge, like, this is breast milk, don't drink it. <laughs> and they will tease, you know, but they were really supportive. And I was so happy I had that. I also received lactation accommodation very well and gracefully when I was getting my master's degree at Simpson. Um, they didn't have a place for me to set up and pump, but I was met with each professor, um, he, she, they, um, each person was really happy to give me the time I needed to pump in class. I would throw over cover. I understand not everybody is so comfortable with that, but they all rooted me on. And um, one time I forgot a uh, pump piece and in class and I let my teacher know and she let me come or she let my baby come into the class and I nursed my baby. Well, or yes, I nursed my baby right outside class. Let me back that up. Um, and she let me just come back into class when I was ready. So I was very supported by my teachers too. My kids went to Head Start. So in Head Start, they were amazing with accommodation. There was a big sofa outside if you want. What I mean outside, like, so my daughter's daycare room is like this room and right at the front of her daycare room was a big 
chair or you know, sofa. If you wanted to sit there, if not, you can come in and inside the actual daycare, they had a big old chair. So I would just go in, thank God, <laughs> and just kind of whip it up <laughs> and nurse her. Of course, you know, you cover it, especially if other parents are coming in to pick up, but they were just like, go ahead. So they really accommodated that. People in public haven't been, always been as friendly, but I've always had um, a way to communicate with them um, without getting defensive. Because sometimes when somebody doesn't understand and they've had a different family culture, we've lived in a different culture, they don't necessarily understand the deeper meaning behind feeding your baby. And so I've had many conversations with strangers, whether it was for myself or for a fellow mom, to be able to explain. And part of that was asking them, why does it upset you? And then getting to the root of what their true feelings are. And then um, that's gone over well each time. I sort of say often like, um, have boobs will travel. You can nurse a baby almost, you can nurse a baby almost anywhere. And so that part of them being really little was really easy. I think moms are super, we're super humans. We're like super powered women and we just need to remember that we can do it. it can, there can be challenges, but we have some really good resources, you know, with you guys here at WIC and the Rancheria. And I mean, we're not as big of a city as other places with a lot of other, um, resources but the ones that we have here are really great and I just want moms to know that as long as they reach out when they're having a tiny speed bump it doesn't turn into a mountain and um, you know just to keep going that our tiny babies are getting every little drop of milk from us that they can and we're making them the healthiest best babies especially when the world is as weird as it is now. I want other moms to know that they are worth it and um that whatever need that they have, that it is valid. And so their voice deserves to be heard in any direction of life it needs to be heard. And specifically in this circumstance that when they make this choice for them and their baby, it trickles down into like all the generations to follow and it really makes a pivotal moment right here, right now.